So probably the first idea when you see this question is to take our bracket and expand it. That will give us a series of like sines and cosines all added together, and we could solve each one of those individually using by parts. But that would take a long time. We'd have a lot of terms, well, 12 terms, 1 plus 11 in total. Two of them would just be like one is sine, one is cos, to the power of 11 for each of them. And then everything else would be a mixture of sine and cos. So each one would have to be evaluated using by parts. That will take ages. There must be a quicker way we can do this. So what I'll do is I'll just sketch out sine and cos. Not the addition, but just kind of them individually. If I do the sine in blue, we start at zero, go up, go down, go back up again. And if I do uh, cos in pink, we start at the top, go down, come back up and go to the top again. So what we can do is we can split this, not just in half at pi radians, but also at pi on two radians and three pi on two radians. And what we start to see is this first section is very similar to this last section, uh, this third section even, sorry. And actually they are the same, it's just the negative version of, of each other. And exactly the same with section two and section four. So if we call f of x the thing inside the bracket, i.e. sine of x plus cos of x, what we can say is that f of x minus pi, so i.e. moving the graph to the right by pi radians, so section 1 is now on top of section 3, is equal to the negative of the function. Spot on. So now if we think about our, uh, the integral we need to evaluate, if we split that at pi, so now we'll have one integral from 0 to pi of f of x to the power of 11, plus another integral with all the same stuff, f of x, power of 11, dx, but now going from pi to 2 pi, so just taking this, splitting it in half down the middle, we can use some sort of jiggery-pokery and change this one around to hopefully have it cancel off with the other one. So let's move this to the left by pi. So what we need to do is 2 pi will become pi, this will become 0, and it's going to then be f of x plus pi as we've moved to the uh, to the left by pi. Now then, this isn't quite the same as what we've got over here. But luckily, both of the functions repeat every 2 pi. So what we can say, as long as there's a difference of 2 pi within our operand, they are the same. Or well, i.e. this is also equal to f of x plus pi. Now then, we can take that, stick that in here, and what we end up with is it's still going to be plus pi is 0, and then it's going to be minus f of x all to the power of 11. This minus, then, we can take out of this square bracket, raise it to the power of 11, we'll just keep it as a minus. So all together, minus pi 0, f of x to the power of 11 dx. And now if we look at the two different integrals we've got, they are the same. So as we're doing one, take away the other one, we know the total at the end must be zero.